Alrighty then. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Matthew Baker of Beautiful New York Tours. I would like to mention that I appreciate that not everything that happens in New York is beautiful, the name of my company notwithstanding. Uh, some terrible things have happened in the history of our city, but I do like to think that what we learn from those terrible things and the ability that we have to make a decision not to let them happen again, that is beautiful. So while even some of the most horrible aspects of our history, the most positive thing you can say about it is that they are interesting, that they are interesting from a historian's perspective, there is beauty in that too. It happened in New York. The year is 1643, and the place is Fort Amsterdam. In this fort, we find Governor Willem Kieft. He has been the governor of New Amsterdam for five years, and finding the colony in a state of near economic disaster has done very little to help it grow. What he has done instead is encouraged and abetted conflict between the warring tribes of natives on the island of Manhattan and its environs, and continued to enhance the animosity between the natives and the Dutch. Now, Kieft's tyranny came to a head when he decided to tax the natives, to, to demand a tribute from all native tribes uh, in order to offset the costs of building new military fortifications. And the natives, especially the Raritans of Staten Island, pointed out the Dutch were never invited in the first place, and Kieft knew what he could do with his tribute demand. Well, Kieft decided that he wasn't going to take that sitting down, and wanted to go to war with the Raritans. The excuse he needed came when a young native killed an old tavern owner, ostensibly as revenge for a murder that he had seen among his people some years before, and when his people would not turn him over to the Dutch for their justice, Kieft insisted that a military detachment go and slaughter the village uh, where this young man came from. But Kieft wasn't willing to do it on his own. So he established the Council of Twelve Men. This was the first elected representative body in New Amsterdam. But the Council of Twelve Men did not simply rubber stamp Kieft's plans the way he had hoped they would. They counseled negotiation and patience. So Kieft proceeded to simply disband the Council of Twelve, ignore their advice utterly, and forbid them from meeting in his absence. At this point, there were two villages of native people who had settled in Corlier's Hook and in Pavonia, what is now Jersey City, just across the river. And they were essentially refugees uh, from a conflict that they had had with the Mohawks further north. And they discovered that they could not count on any protection from Governor Kieft and his colony. So when Kieft found out that they had settled where they did, he sent military attachments to slaughter them. At Corlier's Hook, 40 men, women, and children were murdered. At Pavonia, another 80. The Pavonia massacre was easily visible to witnesses across the river. Captain David de Vries, who himself had earlier engaged in a short bloody war with the Staten Island Raritans, reported what he saw across the river. Infants were torn from their mother's breasts and hacked to pieces in the presence of their parents, and the pieces thrown into the fire and in the water, and other sucklings being bound to small boards were cut, stuck, and pierced, and miserably massacred in a manner to move a heart of stone. The unintended consequence of these two massacres was to unite the previously warring factions of natives against the Dutch. For the remainder of 1643 and 1644, the natives would call it the Year of the Blood. 
Europeans simply called it Kieft's War. By 1645, both sides had grown tired of the fighting with very little to show for their efforts, and a truce was struck. But the strain upon the colony had grown so prohibitive to the colonists that many were leaving and going back to the Netherlands. Governor Kieft was finally recalled in 1647 and ordered to come home to answer for his actions. It never happened. He died in a shipwreck en route to the Netherlands. Today, there is very little left of New Amsterdam in the city of New York, but there are some very interesting remainders downtown in the area of Battery Park. And so a pilgrimage can be made when it is safe to do so. Please check me out at Beautiful New York Tours. You can search Beautiful New York Tours on Facebook or email me at baker.tours at yahoo.com. Again, that is baker.tours at yahoo. Thank you very much.